Hey, what's up? This is Jake. You're in Jake's shop. I've got my LS1 Swap Camaro here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about wiring. I'm doing a completely custom wiring harness in this car, front to rear. We've got a lot of different components going in this car. I'll show you some tips and tricks about how I like to start the process. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It'd be way too much information. Maybe some soldering techniques, things like that. Check it out. Alright, I'm waiting on some parts, so I thought, why not go ahead and start working on some wiring? It's kind of fun for me. A lot of people think that's craziness. But what I've done here is, this is an LS Swap Camaro. It's got a Dakota digital dash. It's got a vintage air system in it. It's got aftermarket delay system wiper, electronic fuel pump. You know, this is a different car. A standard wiring harness would work for some things and other things not. So I have, you know, plenty of wiring harnesses. <laughs> Decided to go ahead here and start doing some wiring. I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I'm doing, but I am not going into detail because the wiring is very involved, but it also just takes some patience and it's kind of a puzzle, it's kind of fun. So I did an Enos wiring harness from Racer's Edge here. These guys are great. They're actually out of Idaho. Love the wire, the wire is, you know, you don't need as many relays for different things. Everything comes pre-marked. He actually marks up the wiring harness instructions for you on where things should go. I told him I had a 68 with an LS1 conversion. Pretty straightforward there. You know, the, the, the fuse block itself and the relays that are built into this little fuse panel are all, you know, a newer style, right? You've got your horns, your turn signals, your hazards. Other than that, you know, a lot of the fuel injection system just gets its, you know, gets its powers and its, its different things. And that's, you know, that's the fuel injection system that you choose, right? There's a whole separate computer that gets wired up. It all ultimately comes out of this harness. It is fused and the ignition, but the ignition stock in this car, you know, one thing I'll be getting a new ignition, but I'm definitely going to be getting a new, these are this, the dimmer switch. The ignition isn't even on this old harness, but I do like these clips. You know, I'm going to be using a standard dimmer switch in this car. So I'll go ahead and rebuild this entire connector and get a new dimmer for the car. Those are little things you can get. Obviously the fuse box on the old one fits in the firewall like so. It's just trash, old glass fuses. It doesn't even have circuits I need for this application anymore. So I'll be making a cool little plate for where this used to go through the firewall. And uh, it'll be an access plate where my harness can go through to, into the engine compartment, hit my alternator and everything else. So what I really like to do whenever I go to wire a vehicle is I just like to start from the back. It just, it's kind of fun, you know, you got turn signals, tail lights, backup lights. I've got a send fuel sending unit and a fuel pump all back in the back of the car. I am gonna do a relay setup on my fuel system. So when the ignition comes on, click, the relay clicks on so I don't have to run a big wire back there and I can have it fused separately. Uh, but I really love these wires, you know, they're just really nice wiring, everything's marked, you know, turn signal switch, brake light switch, uh, fuel sending unit, hazards, I mean, every single wire is marked and I've always found way more wire in here than I need. Alright, this looks like a mess, right? I am wiring custom harness into the back of this car. And what I really love about this wiring harness is every single wire is marked. We've got right tail light, left tail light. I've got fuel sending unit wire and it's marked, right? It's right on the wire. This is the fuel pump wire. I don't know if that's gonna focus for us. Fuel pump, fuel sending unit, ground. I made a nice little hole here, put a rubber grommet in it and we're gonna go ahead and show you how I like to solder all my connections and how I make all these connections. You know, you can't think of the whole system at one time. You do it one piece at a time and tidy it up and work it back all the way to the fuse block or wherever you're going with different things. And the directions from uh, Enos are, are pretty good. They give you a lot of different information. You still got to be pretty intuitive, I guess. I've done enough of this now. It's not that bad. I still have to reference the directions, but this is all the stuff that I use when I'm wiring. And this looks like an absolute mess, but there's a lot of organization here as well. I'll do a little solder connection, show you what I'm doing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and, and put the ends that I need for my ground, my fuel level sending unit, and my positive connections for my fuel pump and sending unit. 
So what I use are these little blue connectors, right? They're blue. Well, they're not blue because what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take this little connector off. These are just cheap little pieces of steel, but what that allows me to do is give a bolt connection here. So I carefully just un get the blue off of here. They make, there's some really fancy wiring components out there that you can spend a decent amount of money on with like little heat shrink tubings and whatnot, but I just don't think there's anything better than a soldered connection on these things. So what I use is a combination of soldering and heat shrink. Okay. That's my way. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a connection on the ground to the ground wire that fits onto that fuel pump assembly. Strip it, grab my little connector, slide it on the wire. I like it when it's protruding past the connector just slightly and go ahead and crimp it. My crimp didn't work just right because it wasn't square on it. Tidy that up, all right, she's nice and crimped. Not going anywhere? No. So I did go ahead and slide shriek, heat shrink tubing down the wire ahead of time. I also actually put my rubber grommet in where this penetrates in through the floor panel ahead of time. Drill the hole, put a nice little rubber O-ring grommet in there and slid my wires through before I did all these connections. Otherwise those wouldn't have been very easy to put in there. Now, I have some really cool Kajavises. That's an official term, by the way, Kajavis. On order that gives you a little pillar alligator clamp to hold the wire for you. But since I don't have that yet, Amazon or wherever the heck I ordered it from is taking forever, um, meaning more than a couple days. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my vice grips somewhere, somehow here so I can, ooh, here we go. Can you see that in the camera? There we go. Soldering iron, basic soldering iron. Any soldering iron will work. Thought about buying a new one, but haven't yet, because they're just why when it works, right? So, a little heat, get some heat into that fitting. Now this is a flux, it has flux built into the, into the wire. It's gonna heat that and give her a little bit of, maybe if it's hot. Done. So that fitting is not going anywhere. So then what I do is I slide my heat shriek tubing up and around that connection, make it nice and cool looking. And then I've got a heat gun somewhere. Good old Harbor Freight heat gun. There's my connection, right? And that'll hit my ground. I'm doing that for everything, every connection on this car. You know, I've got all the brand new light Dorman light sockets that I went ahead. I don't think you can see it on the camera. Wired those in, heat shrunk them, taped them. I've got my grounds, I've got my future wire coming in here. Every wire on this car has been named, which is so nice when you're, when you're doing things. You know, this is the left turn. So this will go to my left turn signal. And this car has backup lamps. And the left and, and right turn signal is one thing because it's a, it's a two, the bulb has a higher and a lower, right? You gotta figure out which wire is high and which one's low. On this particular one, the white wire is your higher wire, which means your higher, this is gonna be my turn wire, right? It's, a, it's the bright, it's also the break. And then this wire is your just normal tail lamps, right? And all that wires back up to where you hit the brake lights, this flashes. When you hit the turn signal, this flashes. That's all wired up at your fuse panel, so you don't really worry about that now. All you need to know is high and low. It grounds through these pins here on the side of the bulb on this particular car, the 68 Camaro. And that's, you know, the wiring directions will allude to how that works when you go through them and you kind of understand what's going on. All right, more overkill stuff because that's what I like to do with wiring. Every one of these, you know, I've got my fuel sending unit, I've got my fuel pump, and I've got my ground. And they're all marked on the tank, pretty straightforward. And I got these fancy wires now, big, nice 16, 14 gauge wires coming through my little grommet situation here. But I don't know the length yet. These aren't tied into anything yet. They're just hanging, they're just hanging out, right? They'll go up to the front of the car. Well, the ground's not. The ground, I'm just gonna ground it to the body. But, so what's gonna happen here is they go onto my post. Now, obviously, it's really easy now, right? Because it's all marked. This is my fuel pump. That's my positive. Boom. Now, what I like to do, a lot of people do it too. I do this for everything. I use, I put it on bulbs. I put it on every connection I can in this car because 
it's bare metal, right? You want a good connection, you want it to last, you don't want it to deteriorate or, or if it sees too much moisture, whatever. Dielectric grease. I put it on everything. I love it. You know, just a little dab will do you sort of a thing on each one. This is a fancy weirdo can that has a little bit of an aerosol or something and it squirts out. It's asking me about 455 uh, So anyways, we've got fuel pump, boom. Stick that on there like a sole. And stick this little nut do down here like so. Maybe. Oh yeah. That's the power for the fuel pump. This wire says right on it, fuel sender. Um, fuel sender. Ground, negative. If you think of a wiring system at any one given time and you think about everything that's needed, you're gonna drive yourself bonkers. Maybe I'm just not smart enough for that, which is probably more likely that that's the problem. So I like to work it back one at a time. Now you can see all these fancy, fancy wires going through this nice rubber grommet. Well, they're all different lengths right now, so I'm gonna pull on this Kajavis. Get them all about the same length here. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice, tidy wires. Nope, not yet. I'm gonna pull them back out and I'm gonna do my magic tape job. Get them to a position I think I like them. And I'm gonna tape them. This does a couple things. The tape, it protects the wires. You know, right now I'm working technically underneath the car, right? There's a cover that goes over this situation in here. And that, you know, keeps the trunk the trunk and everything else can, you know, I don't mind exposing some of the wire because the wire tells me what it is. And some of the stuff as I'm working through it, I actually like to use these little zip ties and to kind of tidy the wire up as I'm going. And then I can always cut these off and redo stuff if I need to, get it tight, and eventually wrap it as I see fit. I don't wrap every single wire. This particular wire that comes in this kit is super nice wire. It's really robust. There's no reason to cover it all, but anything that's exposed to the bottom of the car, I would, you know, anything that's under a carpet, for the most part, I would, I would cover. Black tape is cheap. It just gives that extra layer of insurance. And that, you know, a lot of people also like that. I don't know what it's called. It's like a little corrugated piece of black plastic that goes over wires. Um, I think that stuff looks crappy. So I don't use it. <laughs> I use black tape. And this is a nice, you know, I use high-end black tape too. I'm not using cheap black tape. This is 3M, it's very flexible. So now that I've got those wires all nice and tidy, they're tied in nice, dielectric grease, I, I slide them through my rubber grommet, get myself a little extra a little wiggle room there. That wire will sit beautifully, and now I'm ready to wire it into the rest of the harness. Just like that. Okay, I got it all tidied up. Obviously, doing your own custom harness like this is not for the weary. You can get pretty good kits online that fit uh, that work pretty good for this sort of thing, but I really like the Eno stuff and I like doing my own wiring I really understand where everything goes, but it tidied all up in there really nice I've got it wrapped where I want it wrapped Got it running pretty much where I want that red wire is actually uh, going to be for a future amp Remote uh, there'll be a separate amp wire going back here. It's gonna have a decent stereo But overall the back is done tidied in here. Uh, I got one wire hanging out for my license plate cover once that comes I'll trim that out But yeah overall looking good and then we come up to the front. So now that the wiring harness is pretty much where I want to run it down through the side of the wheelhouse there, got my wire kind of run up there for the dome lamp. Again, a lot of that stuff is natural, you know, the stock GM fitting stuff that I have to retrofit in. So again, it's a lot of work to do on your wiring harness here. But little by little, I don't know if I'll do too many updates on wiring because it's just a long process, but I'll show you this.
It, like I said, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but this is all the other components that I'm going to be wiring in this car. So right here, this is a Dakota Digital Dash, and it's got its own components as well as its own harness and special box where I'm gonna be wiring in a bunch of sensors. That is a really killer setup. It's just unboxed right now. So there's a bunch of components in there I've gotta figure out how to wire in eventually. And this is the basically the engine wiring harness, right, for this LS1. This is the Phytech system. So I'll be using their stuff. This is their fuse block. I have no clue what all these go to yet. I can make some assumptions, but I'm not gonna bother with it. So this will incorporate at least a part of it, if not the whole thing will incorporate into the harness as well for the engine harness. So those are a couple of components. Obviously, like I talked about, I'm doing a custom harness here. So here's the new ignition. I'll be using that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna reuse the, the ignition harness as well. I'm going to rebuild these connectors and put all the correct wires off the new wiring custom harness that I'll be wiring into these. These are just brand new lights, you know, front headlamp fixtures that I'm getting. So just, there's a lot to it. Like I said, don't be doing a custom harness if you're, if you're not uh, up for the challenge. And that's the main, obviously, fuse blocks that I showed them again. So, hey, if you liked the video at all, hit like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.